This video is brought to you by Edelchrome. Hey guys, Jannik here for Cinecam.net and welcome to another Copycat Friday, a series where we recreate effects from famous movies and music videos. And you are probably wondering what all these people are doing behind me. Well, we started a masking company. Jordi was sick and tired of all the masking, so we kidnapped some random people. Masking? If you were masking, I wouldn't be in this group, Jannik. I'm playing World of Warcraft right now. That's right, he's really playing World of Warcraft. But let's ignore that. Today we are going to talk about something called motion control. Before we are going to create a cool effect with this amazing technique in Premiere Pro, it's perhaps best to better understand it. Like the name already says, it's all about controlling the motion of your movements. And no, I don't mean that you have to grip your camera extra firmly when doing a handheld movement. For motion control shots, you're always going to need external hardware to help you achieve it. Almost always. As we once faked a motion controlled movement when recreating an effect from Maroon 5. The effect worked perfectly with the trick that we used, but with the use of motorized hardware like sliders, camera heads or even robot arms, you can then program a movement that you want to do and make your effect much easier. This can be a simple pan or a slide movement, but it can also be something super intricate that will dazzle the audience. However, one of the main functions of motion control movements is the fact that you can repeat the exact same movement over and over again. This is of course perfect for adding VFX in your moving shot, as this will allow you to film your scene multiple times with the same movement, such as an empty background, a green screen with an actor in front of it, maybe an actor in the back, and even this actor here in front. But you can also use it for simpler things, such as dialogues. In a previous tutorial, we showed you how to spice up your dialogue scenes with a motion control slider. For this video, we had the opportunity to work with our amazing sponsor, Edelkrone, and their slider and head plus module. A very good motion control slider and a joy to use. And guess what guys, they recently released a new super compact motion controlled slider, the Slider 1. As you can see, this slider is especially made to be portable. But even with its small size, it doesn't lose any power, which makes it perfect for any small, small camera. I have the tendency to break stuff. But with this slider, I don't need to worry. They used very sturdy materials for the slider, which in my eyes makes it the perfect motorized slider to travel with. Now for the video of today, we are going to use it in combination with the Dual Hat 1 module. This will give us complete motorized freedom to make some pan and tilt movements. In combination with a very easy to use app, we are going to program some movements in no time and create whatever cinematic shots you want. If you want your own awesome Edelkrone Slider 1, check out the first link in the description below. Now to go further on the motion control topic, did you know that the first Star Wars movie from 1977 was also the first movie to use motion control? Well, I didn't know before this week. Even we learn stuff from our own videos. George Lucas' visual effects company specially invented the Dijkstra Flex motion control system for this movie. As we all know, Star Wars uses a lot of scale models in their special effects. And to create the stunning dogfight scenes from the attack on the Death Star, they also use a 12 meter long scale model. In combination with this scale model, they used the Dijkstra Flex motion control system to film the dogfights. Now they could combine the separate shots of the TIE Fighters and the X-Wings with the trench of the Death Star, creating a stunning fight between spaceships in a small trench. Another film where they used motion control and scale models is Independence Day. They even used so many models that 95% of the effects were achieved by blowing up real miniatures. Like in this scene here, which everybody knows. Here they blew up a 5 meter wide plaster model of the White House. This real life miniature explosion in combination with motion controlled movements really maximized the flaming bombast of the shots. Now all these examples are a combination of practical effects and the motion control technique. But now let's have a look at a newer movie called Jumper that solely uses the technique to add teleportation VFX in post production. Here they use shots with a wide range of movements in combination with some cool teleportation effects. The use of movements will give the audience a more realistic feeling and will really sell the effect more. And guys, you know what's really coincidental? We are actually going to recreate this teleport effect to show you how to use special effects in your motion controlled movements. However, 
I would first like to say something very serious about teleporting. And the fact is, I'm completely against it. Let me explain. The idea behind teleporting is transporting yourself over large distances, which I'm fine with. But to do this, you need to deconstruct your body to a molecular level and then rebuild it completely somewhere else. The question here is, are you still yourself or are you a copy? And then you have the phenomenon of the movie Fly. It doesn't really give me any good hopes for the future of teleporting, as I don't want to become a half-human, half-fly. I'm more of a fan of the pneumatic tube system of Futurama. <laughs> Seems flawless. But I think that yet enough about motion controlled movements and teleporting. Just let's begin with the effects. The first thing you want to do is determine which motion you want to make. So let's program our slider one from Edelkrone with the handy app. Now that we have the motion that we can do over and over again, it's time to take the shots. The first shot you want to take is an empty shot. When you got that, you start the movement all over again and let your actor do his thing. When you come to the point where you need to teleport, just let them jump. Nothing too fancy, just a simple jump. After this jump, you can start the movement all over again from the beginning and let the actor start on a different spot. When you want your actor to reappear, let him jump again and then he can continue play his role. Of course, this all needs to be timed a little. Otherwise, you will maybe jump a little bit too early or maybe too late. So a handy tip is that you use a stopwatch to monitor your timing. Now let's jump into Premiere Pro. The first thing you want to do is sync all the three clips. You can do that by decreasing the opacity and nudging them with the arrows in the timeline. Do this until the backgrounds are completely aligned. Now that they are in sync, let's cut them up. Look for the point in the first clip of your actor where he pretends to teleport. Make a cut in the middle of the jump, then go four frames back in time and make another cut. After this, do exactly the same for the reappearing part. Again, look for the jump, make a cut in the middle, and this time go four frames further in time to make another cut. This will single out a part of the clip for the teleportation effects. You can now delete everything you don't need anymore. For the first actor clip, this will be everything behind the second cut. For the second actor clip, everything before the first cut. Now you can select the first teleport part that we singled out. Here you can mask out the actor. So take the pen tool from the opacity properties and start creating a rough mask around the actor. Next, enable the animation for the mask expansion and the feather. Go two frames further in time and lower the expansion to shrink the mask and cut into the actor. And you can also increase the feather a little bit. Then again, go two frames further in time and do exactly the same. Decrease the expansion till there is still a little bit visible of the actor and increase the feather a bit. Now let's add some texture to the teleport. In the effects library, search for the turbulent displacement effect and drag it to your clip. Now within the effects control panel, you can start by setting the amount to 0, the size to 40 and the complexity to 10. After this, enable the animation for the amount and go two frames further in time. Here you can set the amount to 100. Then two more frames further in time to the end of the teleport clip and set the amount to 200. Okay, we already have a cool teleport effect with some texture. However, I find the edges a little bit too hard. So let's look for the Gaussian blur effect and drag that to the clip. Animate the blur effect from 0 to 10 within a time frame of 2 frames. This will already make it look much better. Now let's do the reappearing teleport effect. Just copy the mask properties from the disappearing teleport clip and paste them to the appearing teleport clip. What you now want to do is adjust the mask and most importantly switch the begin keyframes with the end keyframes. This will reverse the expansion and the feather effect. After this you can also copy and paste the turbulent displacement effect and the Gaussian blur. Of course, here you also need to switch up the begin keyframes and the end keyframes. And that's really it for the whole teleport effect. However, you can still add a cloud puff when you disappear and appear. This will really help to sell the effect and make it look cooler. Hmm. I'm hungry. Hmm. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. 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 
And that is how you create a teleport effect with a motion controlled movement. Of course, you can teleport in many different ways. Like you can do it in the film ride style, or maybe just like Peter McKinnon. Doesn't really matter how you do it, as long as you don't become a half human, half fly. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you Edelkrone for the support. And like always, what he said. So we kidnapped some random people. <laughs> so Jordi had to say something, but he's not, he's not paying attention. He's playing World of Warcraft. That's what he's doing. Can't do two things at the same time. Masking. When you're an Azeroth, you don't need to mask. You have magic there. <laughs>